In this video, we're testing out what happens when you load too many files into a ChatGPT Plus project folder. And this came about for me this morning because I'd loaded up all these files and I got this message saying responses may be of lower quality due to the number of files used in the project. And I thought, can I work with this and give it information so it uses the correct files and that's what we're testing today. So for context I have this project called 555 Brand Dave and I have a bunch of conversations around how I do my marketing, my branding, my mission statements, that sort of information. Now I also follow a structured program from Dent International. This is Daniel Priestley and the key person of influence and I'm in the Startup Accelerator program and this morning I was doing one of the workshop lessons and I ended up having all these files that I thought I need to get this into chat GPT so I just loaded them and the trouble is that we're seeing that message that says lower quality responses so what I did was I quickly went into another chat window and I just asked the question using the project files that are available in ChatGPT Plus, can I deal with the fact that there's a message like this? What do we do to mitigate it? And it's given me the idea that if I actually specify the name of the file, I should be able to get it to use that effectively. So that will be our starting point. But what I think I'll also do while we're here is write a couple of prompts so that we can get this more into the custom instructions. Because when you're working with projects, you've got this area called instructions, and I've already got instructions in here about my brand. But what would be useful is that if I already had a list of the files that are available and a little bit of metadata or instructional data about when it should pick these particular files. So we will continue with some prompt engineering over here and we will test it over here. Now what I've done at the moment is set up a little prompt designed to iterate over the 11 files I've got. I think that number is irrelevant really, but the fact that there are PDF documents is true and we're trying to describe the main purpose now, I was specific not to make this a synopsis. It's not about getting the summary of the document, but getting it in a specific format. And that format is known as a functional summary or retrieval guide. And the reason for this is that we don't want to just know what's in the files, but we want to know when it would be useful to pick those particular files. So what I'm going to do is select everything that's here, and we will come over to our little document here. And let's just just test what happens. So let's just run this and see whether it can iterate through the PDF documents and write a functional summary for each particular file. So the first one, it's only done one of the files. So I think we might need to specifically state each file as we go. But the good thing about building this information is that we should be able to use it to create our custom instruction a bit later on. Now I've just noticed that the bottom that it's suggesting that it can move on to the next file. So we're just going to run that and it looks like we can just iterate through these one at a time. Let's look at this document here, Dent Value Canvas. So a structured worksheet for a articulating a value proposition by mapping pain points to emotional drivers. Now, I was working on this particular document this morning, so that all makes sense. And so we have a guideline of what it does, how it helps people, but more importantly, from the retrieval point of view, it tells us when to use this particular document. So I've just gone through and done all 11 documents and they were pretty easy. All I had to do was press yes each time. It would tell me the next file it was going to do and that's what it's done here, Dent Origin Mission, where we've got what the document is about and when you would use it. And as I was moving through, this was all working perfectly. I did get to a specific file of one of the people that is already a member of the Dent program this her name is Colette and I thought this can't be written that way because I don't necessarily want to use this as a source of truth this is more an example so I just made a simple statement that it should go back to this version and mention that it's one of the members and not a specific instruction from Dent and this is great because it's come up with when you would use it so it's come up with the fact that it's for a high impact 
person. This is actually a really good example, but it is only an example being described. The last one that was also important was that I'd done a bunch of deep research using OpenAI, and that particular document is really good. It's really comprehensive, but it's not the direct instructions as per DEMP. So I also ensured that when I asked it to process it, I gave it extra information to let it know when to use it. And we can see here that it will be used if I'm ever working on my pricing structures, which is actually how I used it manually a couple of days ago, but also that it's not offered by Dent directly. It serves as a complementary resource. Now I've put together a prompt that will help us prepare the custom instruction. It's going to go through the PDF documents, describe when to use them, keep it summarized, brief. We need a brief, but it needs to be quite small and emphasizes the retrieval relevance. So I'm going to take this information as we see it here. We'll come back to our main conversation. Everything is here, but I will actually paste in the exact values. So if we just come down here and say, use the following, something like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've made changes as I was doing the conversation, so I don't want it to use the past. So we'll come down here, we'll press enter, and we paste in all this information, and let's see what happens. And here we have the custom assistant instruction, dent project file index, and this is looking great. We've got all the files listed. Look at this, it said this one's not from dent, use it for pricing model comparison, which is great. And we've got error as not a dent template, but a real person example. So what we should be able to do is take all the information from here. And if we go back to the project, we can click on the custom instructions and we'll just pop down to the bottom. We'll just go after here and paste all that information in, hit save. So let's test this out. I'm just going to copy a few words from one of them. This is ideal client profiles. We'll head over to a new chat. And I'll say, can you create, and we'll just paste that information in using the following information. And the information can come from my brand information, from my mission and maybe my content, maybe the pillars that I work with. And now it's just a case of paste in a mission, paste in some pillars. So I'll come over to this document here. We've got a little bit of a mission going on. We'll copy that down and paste it in. We'll come down and let's look at the system I use. It's a scale framework. I can either do the short version or the long version. I'll go with the short version and we can already see that that's part of my mission anyway, but now we have a bit more of a definition to it. And we'll just run this, and hopefully what it's going to do is look within a particular document. And it certainly has. I'm pretty impressed already because I've been working through this tutorial on this at the moment. So we've got ideal client profile, AI driven creator. That's the sort of person that I'm marketing to because what I do is I create AI workflows specifically for content creators very much like myself. And that's what it's saying. Creative systems thinkers, aspiring YouTubers, creators, solo content teams. So the client profile looks good, the core pain points look good, the deep fear and the desired outcome. And it also mentions my signature method. And one of the things to note is that I never use the term signature method. I know that that comes from Dent International. So I'm already re really happy with this. So that was just a little quick walkthrough on how you can improve your interaction with ChatGPT files, especially when you've got a lot of them. What we did was essentially just take a go through them and build up a custom instruction put into the custom instructions area so that when we're communicating with our project it can pick the right files automatically anyway i'm happy dave uh, please like and subscribe and if you want to work with me i've got a link in the description you can book a call and uh, we can talk through whatever challenges you have anyway see you in the next video